I just I just started a broadcast and I went to flip my camera around and deleted it. So I apologize to those of you that were watching me when I just left you. <laughs> it's late. Now, you guys are going to see this when you wake up in the morning. So you're going to have to hunt for this video because we don't have the thousands of people watching this at uh, almost, it's quarter to two in the morning. What happened was I was going to go to bed. Oh, uh, Annabelle's birthday was today. So we had a great little dinner tonight. And I went to go to my library and I kind of worshiped the Lord a little bit. And I think I got a second wind worshiping. And, and I wanted you guys to see this prophecy that was delivered to Donald Trump. Most of, you know, the news doesn't cover it. People don't talk about it, but Paula White's been fasting and praying. It's a national day of prayer just happened uh, 48 hours ago. And the spirit of God is boom, the same day Michael Flynn, the news comes out about Michael Flynn and this thing started, the veil is starting to tear off this country. That was the moment that we had the National Day of Prayer going on. We're going to hammer this thing, and I'm beginning to get this word, the zigzag word in my spirit, that we're in a disaster, that God is going to cause us to overtake and recover all, and he's qualifying a remnant right now. He's really, he's, he's confirming who he wants to work with, and I can't believe there's 500 of you guys watching this right now. Why aren't you in bed? Listen, you know what? You guys are probably watching those late-night uh, ab commercials. <laughs> All right, now watch this. And, and and Lord help me not to turn my camera off. Let me get it right here. Here we go. Okay, turn that around. There we go. I want you to watch this. It's Paula White prophesying. Watch your prophecy over the president. And streams in the desert. Malachi 4.2 says, Jesus, arise over the nation with healing in your wings. President, one last word. Watch this. Like David, who had had victory after victory after victory after victory would face his biggest battle. It was called Ziglag. And they would take his wives and his children and the city would be burned down. And he cried and he wept and he began to pray out to God and God gave him a word. And through fasting and praying, I believe this is the word for you and for this nation. Come on. The Lord spoke to him and said, pursue and go after them and you shall without fail recover all. Sir, the word of the Lord, I believe, for this nation and for this administration is you will recover all. Come on. <clears throat> I believe it. He was so moved by that. Watch. Thank you. He can't go on. Next is Chaplain. That was a fascinating. And if you could have seen his response, because another camera setting had him standing here while she was prophesying, you could see his reaction. I'll have to get that one for you. Just so moving. But... Um, I just want to show you something else. It's so beautiful. One of the things that uh, we got a guy praying, you know, and I love prayer that's right from the heart. And it's nothing like prayer from the heart. My mother was from Brooklyn, New York. And so every now and then I could talk like I'm from Brooklyn, New York. I know what Brooklyn sounds like. I know New York. And uh, it's, kind of, it's kind of like the Jewish part of me who kind of goes into the New York thing. And then I'm talking a little bit like this because with New York, you can talk. But uh, this guy here is, his name is uh, Mario Salerno. And and, you know, Donald Trump watches TV. He watches media. It's, it's kind of funny what he does. And so he was watching him on television, some interview, and he says, this guy, he, he, he didn't, for, during the coronavirus, he let his 200 tenants not have to pay because he wanted to do something for the humanity of people, and his faith has to sometimes do something. And so he's a, but he's, but he's a real kind of, you could tell, an authentic Brooklyn business guy. And I just want you to watch him because I was so touched by his prayer. and The president was too. So here we go. We're going to go on with our little show here, our high-tech show. All right. Here we go. Ibrahim Rahim. Thank you, Chaplain. No, not that. Not that. I want to go back here. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Wait a second. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. We got to get. Thank you very much, Mr. President. There we go. I'm on it. On this special day of prayer, I have nothing written. I just want to thank the good Lord. Every morning when I wake up, 3.30 in the morning, get ready, put my feet, I pray. And I ask the good Lord, please, conquer this vicious virus. He's making us all stumble. And besides me praying to the good Lord, I pray for our dear president. And I tell God, please give him the strength and the power because he's not only our leader strength. of the great United States, the whole world is following this gentleman. And I can't say anything else, but let's please 
pray for this wonderful man, faith before fear. And Mr. President, I'm honored to be here, and I pray for you every day. God bless America, and God bless you, Mr. And President. And from the Thank heart, you. I love that New York. I love New York. That's so great. Thank you, Mario. That's really nice. I appreciate it. And by the way, I love your tie, but I love your words even more. Thank you very much. A Trumpian ad lib. In every age, I love your every... tie. <laughs> I love your tie, but I love your words. We're going to pray for this president. He's gonna, we're going to turn, and we're going to turn, we're going to turn, and I'm praying that the veil is going to begin to come off. We're going to start to see, so there'll be such a backlash against the, the blue state politics, the politics, uh, the weaponizing of this virus for the purpose of politics. The, the economy is being destroyed. The economy is being destroyed, and some states don't care because as far as they're concerned, a destroyed economy... Well, that's what socialism is, a dependence upon the state. They're not too quick to want to solve that problem. It puts them in power, and it puts them in power. Remember, they get a paycheck by being the government. That's what happens. As soon as you hit a 50% tipping point with people on support from the government, you never go back into freedom. And, and, and then you lose, when you lose that, you lose the ability to be in control of your own destiny because the government controls your destiny. So we're not going to see that happen. I don't believe God put Donald Trump in office uh, for one term uh, and then let this happen and not have us come out. But I'll tell you, you talk about a cliffhanger. The Lord is still dealing with us because I, I believe the word of Haggai that says the reason why this is happening is because we were not building his house. And to this day, Christians aren't building his house. Do you think Christians are actually aware that there's a deep state disgusting uh, uh, agenda that wants to destroy the United States, that wants to drive it over a cliff, that wants to bring it into social, socialism and then shove down all these radical kind of societal mandates and, and, and restrictions of speech? Look at how they're locking people up in a police state right now around the country. I think it's going to, back, I think it's going to be a backlash. I think it's going to be a backlash. Because the, the people are starting to think and they're starting to say, what is this? Americans don't like the police state idea. And I don't think they're going to go along with this for very much longer. And it's going to be, there's going to be a, a shifting. But we're going to pray this Michael Flynn thing. I can't believe it. There are still, there are still dinglings that on the left oh, feel that Michael Flynn, even though he was set up in a perjury trap, even though the FBI was weaponized to take down a private citizen, in, um, you know, in an examination, they weren't even authorized to do an exam. And even though they told him don't have a lawyer present, it's nothing official. And even though they set the trap and then they threatened his son, they, they threatened to, to hurt his son in some expose they were going to do if he didn't plead guilty. And he wasn't really even guilty of anything. No, they said lying. He had talked to a Russian, he had talked to a Russian ambassador. He was, already, he was about to take office and he had talked to him, talked to him. But that wasn't anything they were supposed to be investigating. And uh, he said, no, I didn't talk to him. And so I didn't talk to them, but they weren't talking about anything. That's the point. There was nothing of substance, there was no, no collusion going on. And so this man had to suffer a terrible price and uh, bankruptcy. And, and they wanted to put him in jail for life. These people, are there's a sickness. And you know what? You know what? I, I just want to say this. The thing that bothers me most isn't the, the animus, the hatred, the hostility, the mind-warped, obsession and, 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 and agenda of these powerful and intelligent people that are under the influence of spirits that want to take over your country. What bothers me is the, is the ignorance and apathy of Christians. Because, you know, if you've got a pedophile, um, you know, in the neighborhood, you want, you want to be, a, a, we want to be alerted if you've got children. And if you've got people that are out to destroy your freedom, your economy, your children's future, you should be enlightened enough to, uh, to want to protect yourself and protect your neighborhood and protect your children, protect your future. And the only protection you've got is the, uh, the voice that you have and the vote that you've got. It's the voice you've got to speak up and uh, persuade and speak freely and be civil and be courteous and be witty and wise and right, but be bold and speak and then exercise your influence in primaries to get the right candidates or to run yourself and get involved with the local level stuff. Forget about aiming for the Congress all the time. Right? Everybody wants to be a congressman. How do you want you start off a little humble? Why don't you aim for the school board or something? Get, get your feet wet. But get in there and own your territory. I don't want to get under this now. It's a beautiful day. It was my wife's birthday. The president here is getting, I feel him getting strengthened. 
But while he's sitting there talking, I can hear the echoes. I hear the rrr, 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 in the background. It's a constant rumble of hostility and anger and protest. And it's not, it's not like, well, we're using democracy. It isn't, demo it isn't using democracy. It's like the barking of dogs in the back. It's a spiritual barking, rrr, 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 barking of dogs. And it's a, it's a manifestation of, of the discontent and the anger that the enemy has over anything right or righteous. And I believe it's going to be dealt with in a, in a decisive way. If we aren't apathetic, if we aren't indifferent, if we aren't, um, oh, you know, well, Lance, I can't get wrapped up. You ought to be informed on exactly what's happening with Michael Flynn right now. You want to be informed what happened to Papadopoulos because he was also set up by some sleazy deep state um, agents working with the CIA, the universities, and Australia, and the UK. I mean, let's go ahead and expose this stuff. Expose it all. That's why I say expose it. I want to know what happened to Carter Page. I want to know how he was set up. Carter Page and Papadopoulos. And what about poor um, Roger Stone? Poor Roger Stone. What the heck they doing there? There's morons in ra raiding his house with CNN on the front lawn and, and SWAT teams. The old man and his wife is deaf. I mean, listen, we got to take this Flynn case. We got to take this Roger Stone. I say we, we combine these together. We move, we, we expose these things. We take these cases. There should be some Supreme Court cases coming out of this exposure. I say we take these Stone and Flynn. I say we have a new Flintstone case. <laughs> the Flintstones are going to the Supreme Court. <laughs> I was joking myself. That joke was in me all day. Because Flynn and Roger Stone, it's a Flintstone case. Anyway, I think that uh, these Democrats are like Barney Rubble over there. We got to deal with this thing. Well, we'll let that go for the moment. Now, we're, uh, we're coming into this new season, and I think that the, the, there's already something springing in the air. There's always this crushing of the virus in the atmosphere. We're moving into this new day of Pentecost, which is going to be coming up on May 31st, and we're escalating, we're escalating, we're building, building, building alignment. I encourage you to join me every night. I take an hour to worship. You want to join me in worship? Should I do a worship service with you guys? Should you go back in my back room? I go back there. There's no one around. It's just me. I have this big cutout cardboard the image of Donald Trump. Freaks me out every night. I go in there. It's like, boom, I get stood. I somebody in my library, but it's him. I go, I go over. I pray for him. And uh, I don't know what else to do with him. I feel it's inappropriate to you know, lay him down. But um, so the uh, spirit of the Lord is, is visiting in the night season. He's aligning our hearts, aligning our spirits. And I believe that the, uh, the anointing is going to increase, increase, increase. And remember, remember what the words were that were prophesied over the president. When Ziegler, go study it. David lost everything, was taken. America's economy has been stripped. We are stripped so bad. We have more unemployment, more debt, more destruction, more annihilation. And then the blue states want to extend it so that the debt gets just increases. I mean, we had $700 billion uh, bailout with TARP in 2008. And this is like a $4 trillion bailout and another couple of trillion there at the Fed. It's just, we have no idea what this is going to do. 30 million unemployed. But dear God, there's something, it, it is, the, the, the economy was fundamentally sound when this started. And all the businesses that are going to suffer and go out of business, but there's a, the engine will roar. It will be the roaring 2020s yet. And the engine will roar. We'll begin to see it won't come overnight, but the evidence will be there. And, it's, and it's, it's going to be there in certain sectors, in certain states. And I pray that the righteous states, the sheep states, the place where righteousness prevails, there's going to actually be a blessing in those areas. You're going to see the difference. But I'm going to let you go tonight. Mother's Day is, uh, is going to be a specially blessed day. And I have a special Mother's Day program that I, I put together for you. But I had to get this out tonight. Just had to get out of my system because I, I, I was going to post something else and somebody forgot to do it. And this is what I wanted to do for 24 hours, ever since I saw that prophecy. So now you've got it. You've got the Pauline prophecy. And our, and our agreement is going to, Mr. President, pursue, rise up, pursue, go after, and recover all, recover all, recover all. I think this is going to move us into a new alignment in our assignment. I think this is going to move us to the front lines of the battle. I think this is going to activate David's army. I think God is weeding out who are the Christians that don't know what's going on and who are the Christians that do know, and I believe you know what's happening. Or you wouldn't be with me right now on this broadcast. All right, we're going to go. We pray, Father, in Jesus' name. 
Let this president be visited in the night season with counsel, with comfort, with inspiration and with insight. And let, uh, if he's having a hard time hearing, put Mike Pompeo, Mike Pence, someone around him and speaks the very word of the Lord to him so that his soul is strengthened, his spirit is quickened, his mind is made sharper. I pray that every vex and hex and spell and jinx and occult apparatus that has been operating against this country with the deep state so as to, to uh, stumble your people and entrap them in their words. Now's the time when shift needs to shift, when Comey is going to need a, a new comb over, and when, when Brennan is going to have to going to have to brush up his, uh, his, his apologetics when Clapper isn't going to have anybody clapping for him. Lord, I pray that you will move upon those individuals who have sought to do you the most mischief by doing him the most harm. For when they attacked who you anointed, they were attacking you. And I pray that every one of them is brought to the moment of realization that what they have done is wrong. Lord, I pray that they'll catch it in private and repent. Or I pray that you will take them in public and cause them to repent. For Lord, they have done vast damage to, uh, to us all. And, and Lord, even there, it is not stopped. Clearly deliver us from the whole evil, from the whole swamp in Jesus' mighty name. And we thank you for the joy that you're giving us now, for the joy, 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 because there is joy that is bubbling up on the inside of us because there's something turning, there's something changing. We're moving into the upper room alignment, May 31st, and we're breaking out into a new economic uh, roar. The roaring 20s is upon us. All right, now some of you need to go to bed. It's two o'clock in the morning. I'm not gonna be responsible for keeping you up. All right, but I'll see you when the sun comes up. Send me some juice here. Send me some love. Send me some, can you guys, can we, does this work on, uh, how's this work? I put my finger over here and you guys can send me hearts. Can you send me hearts? Whoa, there, look at that, look at that. Whoa, there they come. Yeah, whoo. The power of the hearts. The hearts, hearts and thumbs. <laughs> look at that, I love you guys. All right, thumbs and hearts, back at ya. Be talking to you soon. Hi. I'm Lance Walna, and I want to thank you for watching this broadcast. And if you'd like to see more of what we've got coming up, and you never know when something new is going to be interesting, just hit the subscribe button right there, and I look forward to seeing you in a future broadcast.